All right, we're on section 1.6 of Stewart's Calculus Early Transcendentals, Inverse Functions and Logarithms. Now, to understand inverse functions and logarithms, we have to start with understanding one-to-one -one functions and uh, the horizontal line test, which will help us find one-to-one -one functions. Uh, let's see, one-to-one -one function. Let's say we have a map function map. Domain, range, input, output, x, y. We know how these things work. Uh, let's say we have 4, 2, 0, and then 16, 22, 9. Negative 9. Now we know that uh, for a function, one input cannot give us two outputs. This is just plain not a function. However, it is perfectly fine for two different inputs to provide the same output. Think of um, the graph of x, y equals x squared, for example. Okay, when x equals 1, y equals 1. When x equals negative 1, y equals 1 again. Different inputs same output value, different inputs, same output value. That is perfectly okay within a function. However, um, when you don't have this for a particular function, when it's just, let's get rid of, let's just get rid of this, okay, and let's clean up a little. When you only have that every input produces a unique output, never a repeated output, a unique output, you have what's called a one-to-one -one function, one-to-one, one-to-one, one-to-one. And I think that makes sense. It's very intuitive. Um, and one-to-one -one functions are important because they are the basis for understanding inverse functions, which we will get to in a future video. But for now, we need to understand one-to-one -one functions. Now, what if you were given a graph, okay, x and y, and someone plotted, for example, let's just say a graph of x, y equals x cubed. All right, now, we could go point by point along the x-axis and determine, well, is this point on the graph unique? Does it ever repeat? Um, but that would be kind of tedious to do that for every x value. Of course, we can see that every input is going to produce a unique output. But is there some kind of way, some kind of easy test that can just we could just implement really quickly and tell? And actually, there is and you probably guessed it, it's called the horizontal line test. If you draw an arbitrary horizontal line anywhere on the graph of a function, and if that horizontal line only intersects the function, the graph of the function at one point and one point only, then it passes the horizontal line test, and it is one to one. So the graph of y equals x cubed is one. To one because it passes the horizontal line test. Just to uh, reinforce this, let's look at the graph of y equals um, y equals x squared. If I can make it nice. There we go. That's nice. All right. Here's x. Here's y. If we draw a random horizontal line we can see that it intersects the graph twice. So it fails the horizontal line test. It may pass the vertical line test. The vertical line test is uh, just up and down. And when do we use the vertical line test? We use the vertical line test whenever we want to check to see if a graph represents the graph of a function, an, a real function. This is a real function. It is absolutely a function. However, it's not a one-to-one -one function. Uh, and you'll see that later on. If graph is not one-to-one, -one, it 
can't have an inverse.